Colombian President Manuel Santos has announced peace negotiations with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC, to begin in the coming months in Oslo, Norway. The announcement caps more than a decade of sustained conflict since the failed 1999 negotiations. Though there are no guarantees that these negotiations will succeed where others have failed, there are a number of factors pushing both parties towards some sort of accommodation. Though the FARC is notably active in hit-and-run as well as sabotage attacks, the organization is no longer capable of staging large-scale assaults on government assets. In short, the FARC is in a much weaker position militarily than it was at the height of its strength in the 1990s. The Colombian military has made steady gains over the past several years in taking out high-level FARC leaders and reducing FARC's capability to attack major urban centers. Perhaps the most dramatic demonstrations of these gains were the 2008 rescue operation that liberated former presidential candidate Ingrid Betancourt and 14 other hostages, along with the killing of FARC commander Raul Reyes the same year. This weakened position is an incentive for the FARC to enter negotiations now, while they still have some leverage. The sharp uptick in attacks against energy infrastructure since January has demonstrated the FARC's capacity to threaten Colombia's strategic economic assets. As a result of attacks and kidnapping of oil workers, several foreign companies have had to suspend operations. The rough, jungled terrain in Colombia, where most mineral resources are extracted, is very difficult for the Colombian military to reliably protect. And as increased commodity production has played a key role in Colombia's strong growth and stable economic environment, threatening these assets is a good way for the FARC to bring the government to the negotiating table. From the government's perspective, now may be the time to capitalize politically on the military gains of the last decade. As a former defense minister under the presidency of Álvaro Uribe, Santos came to power in Colombia with plenty of credibility in the fight against the FARC. Santos has also secured additional security cooperation from Venezuela, where FARC rebels frequently find refuge. There is a potential for regime change in Venezuela in October, with any new government likely to be even stricter on security issues and closer to the United States. This may be a contributing factor to the FARC's decision to come to the table now. Santos has the legal framework for peace already in place, indicating that he has the institutional tools he needs to move forward with the negotiations. This does not mean, however, that peace can be expected to begin immediately, and negotiations can be expected to be drawn out. Just this week, FARC militants attacked a coal operation, and the Colombian military killed FARC leader Danilo Garcia in Catatumbo. The two parties can be expected to continue pressing their respective military advantages until a mutually acceptable agreement can be reached, perhaps one that in some ways resembles the 2005 paramilitary demobilization. However, in this case, we can expect the FARC to push harder on political questions, including land reform and the inclusion of the group in the political process in the event that a peace agreement is reached.